good smell. It smelled really good. So today's challenge is all about taste. It's about identifying flavours. My anxiety went through the roof. Now, George has prepared a bolognese, and this is no ordinary bolognese. This is a classic, a family recipe from Bologna. I haven't had bolognese for years. This is a really beautiful recipe containing freshly ground meats. And there's a tip. There's more than one. 17 ingredients go in here. And we expect you to get most of them. Vegetables, aromats, spices, oils. But just so you know, those that perform the worst, those that don't taste what we expect them to, will be facing the elimination challenge. My heart was racing. I think now that it's crunch time and people have actually gone and this could be the last moment and I really do want this. I mean, I really, really do want to give it my best go. For those that are successful, you'll be one step closer to achieving your dream of becoming Australia's first master chef. Guys, 17 ingredients, three minutes. Taste, think, taste, think, and go, yeah? First two, come on, let's go. I straight away smelled cinnamon. My mind went to donuts. So I don't know how I'm gonna go on this one. Right, step up. A chef's palate is something that can't really be taught. It's more intuition. This is molecular gastronomy at its best. Taste, yeah. flavour, smells. <laughs> Julie, you've got less than a minute. Good luck. Step up. I thought I had it. I was like, I've already got 15 in my hand right now, just guessing what's in there. However, when I got to the pot, I turned into a stunned mullet, and all I was drawing was what was in front of me, bay leaf. Bay leaf. Got one thing. There's definitely three ingredients if all of you don't have it on your sheets, I will be so pissed off, yeah? I'm not gonna state the obvious. I think I just, I actually went a bit blank. There's a bay leaf, like many of them, floating at the top. Didn't write bay leaves down. Five seconds, oh, come on, put them down. Last scribbles. I really probably at that stage just froze up and I held onto the piece of paper and maybe so five, four, three, two, one, 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 one. That's it. <laughs> I'm so stuffed up. Step up. Think about it, take your time, digest it. Don't overanalyze it. I think I did okay, although I'd sort of left out one fairly basic ingredient. Tomato. All right, step up. When I was standing in the lawn and I got called up, my heart was racing. That's it. I knew this was going to be really, really hard, but I didn't think it was going to be that hard. Something has really kicked me off and made me super nervous. Oh, what a day. I've never been so scared to taste beautiful food in my life. My father's Sicilian, so I thought, imagine, all I could think of was getting thrown out of a show on, on, on a spaghetti bowl. I'd never live it down. I couldn't go back to Cairns. I'd have to leave town. George prepared a beautiful bolognese. He used 17 ingredients, and your challenge was to identify as many of those as you could. Some of them were obvious, others weren't. Right, you all want to know, yeah? yeah? 17 ingredients. Number one, extra virgin olive oil. Number two, onions. Number three, carrots. Number four, celery. When the judges were revealing the ingredients, uh, my heart was pounding. Number five, Top tomatoes. My name is Greg Bremner. <laughs> I forgot tomato in bolognese. Cinnamon. Nutmeg. 
clothes. Beef. I knew there were a few types of meat, but I just guessed. Pork. Veal. Number 12. Tomato paste. White wine. Garlic. I forgot to put down garlic and, I mean, let's face it, there's bound to be garlic in that. Number 15. Salt. Number 16. Pepper. Number 17. Bay leaf. Hands up. Those who forgot bay leaves. I don't see a hand up here, Alvira. <laughs> Bit higher. I cannot believe it. Alvira, seriously? It was like swimming at the top of the pot. Hello, I'm a bay leaf. What were you thinking? I'm a bit of an idiot, aren't I, really? I just have no idea why I didn't write it down. I've got... I, I just don't know. So after all that, the highest score out of a possible 17 ingredients was 14. The lowest score was 6. Stephen, step forward, please. You had the highest score. You seem really excited. No, woohoo! Yeah, fantastic. Well, it was a relief, I can tell you. I'd never <laughs> live it down. My father would kill me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well done. This is a sudden death taste test. Put one foot wrong, and you'll be going home. There are 24 of the most important ingredients sitting on this bench right now. If you want to survive in this competition, you want to hope that you know them all. Shit. It's going to be hard. It's time to find out the dish that holds your fate. George puts a big red pot in front of us. I can definitely smell seafood of, of some variety. This is how it's going to work. You get to look at the dish, you can smell it, you get to taste. If you name an ingredient correctly, then it moves on to the next person. They taste, they name the ingredient. If it's correct, it goes to the next person. And so on and so on, until one person names an ingredient incorrectly, then they're out of the competition. Carrie, may you do the honours and lift the lid on the pot. The first thing I notice, seafood, seafood, seafood. Lots of it. And you can see other ingredients going on in the dish. And I know that there are going to be some ones that are not so easy. Guys, any ideas of what it is? It's a fish stew. You know what type of fish stew, Jonathan? Bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse? Yep, spot on. It's a classic French Mediterranean fish stew. It's delicious. I'm relatively comfortable with a bouillabaisse, and I'm pretty sure I know what the ingredients are that make it up. I've sort of flicked through them in recipes and that sort of thing, but I've never cooked one, I've never e even eaten one, so it's a little bit concerning. Phil, you're first up. I hate to lose, and I can't let this one go. I have to survive. I'd like to say muscles. Muscles. Black mussels are in the bouillabaisse. Well done. Jonathan, step up to the bouillabaisse and taste. 
first thing I do is taste the sauce. I want to start thinking about what could be in the sauce, but I'm going to name one of the obvious visual ingredients. Uh, scallops. Scallops. Scallops are in the bouillabaisse, Jonathan. Well done. It's my turn. I'm focused, but I'm petrified. I might think I know the ingredient. I just have to make sure what I see and what I taste is what I say. Gary? I'm going to say prawns. Prawns. Prawns are in the bullion base. Well done, Carrie. Good job. Callum, would you like to come up and taste? I'm really nervous because with the pressure of the situation, even things that look obvious, you sort of question yourself over. Callum, name your first ingredient. Uh, bay leaf. Callum, there's bay leaf in the booyah base. Well done. What's the next ingredient? Celery. Parsley. Flat leaf parsley is in the bouillon base. Tomatoes. Carrie, there are tomatoes in the bouillon base. Callum, please step up. Seven ingredients have been identified and 17 are left. Good luck, Callum. Callum, please name your second ingredient. Scampi. What makes you say scampi? Relatively confident that these little guys are scampi. Jonathan, do you think Callum is right? Um. Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, they're definitely not yabbies. They are definitely scampies. Well done. Philip, you're next. Clams. They are clams. Well done. I'm going to say oil. Jonathan, you need to be more specific. You need to tell us what type of oil it is, or you can name another ingredient. What type of oil? Yes. Are you serious? Extremely serious. <laughs> I'm pretty certain for a Mediterranean dish it's olive oil, but I'm not going to take the risk on this ingredient. I'm going to find another ingredient that's going to be a bit more obvious. Uh, fennel. Fennel? He's in the booyah base. Well done, John. Great. I'm really feeling the pressure, and I just hope I don't slip up now. You realise that if you name your next ingredient incorrectly, you're going home. I'm going to say garlic. For just a split second, I second guess myself after naming the ingredient. And if it's wrong, it's too late. Garlic is in the booyah base. No good French cooking would be the same without copious amounts of garlic. Well done. Name 
name the ingredient? Um, onion. There are onions in the booty base. <laughs> well done. You've named 12 ingredients out of 24. Now we're getting into tougher territory. Phil, next up. Fennel seeds. Fennel's already been named. You sure? I found seeds in there. And Fennel I picked seeds? them up and I've bitten into them. Philip? Yep. There are fennel seeds in the beer base. Well done. The next ingredient is fish stock. Fish stock it is. Well done. Salt. There is salt in the beer base. Callum, you ready to name your next ingredient? I might pick up where Jono left off before and say olive oil. You sure? No. <laughs> Why would you say olive oil? In French recipes, they would generally use olive oil. Your reasoning is sound. There is, in fact, olive oil in the Booyah base. You have named 16 ingredients so far. It's never happened before. On a taste test. This is the furthest we've got. Philip, it rolls around and it's your turn again. Let's go. This process is so nerve wracking. Your whole career, your dreams, everything's on the line. And it all comes down to tasting some miserable <laughs> French stew. <laughs> right, Philip, you need to make a decision. Look, I might have to take a stab at the dark with this one. I can't get my head around it. Come on, Philip. Um, Make a decision. I think I'm going to go white wine. After I know my fifth ingredient, George walks up and down the aisle, you know, looking at each cloche, and I'm just praying to God he's going to lift one. I'm a little concerned at this point. Jonathan, do you think there's white wine in this bouillie base? Um, there's, there's definitely an acid in there. After Jonathan's confirmation, I'm, I, I feel a little bit more confident. Philip, I can reveal to you now, there is no white wine in the bouillie base. Philip, I'm so sorry, mate. I feel shattered. I feel a massive pain in my chest. I think it's probably my heart breaking, but I don't know. It's like a bad dream. You started off in this competition knowing that one of our MasterChef mantras was all about taste. So we're going to kick off with a taste test. We haven't had a taste test since top 50, and I was hopeless at it. You'll come forward one at a time, and you'll have two minutes to taste this dish. And then you'll have another minute to write down as many ingredients as you believe are in that dish. The ingredients that you get right will be the only ones that you can cook with later on. I think I have a very good palate, so I'm kind of deep down happy that it is a taste test. Boys, this is a perfectly ordinary taste test, which will lead to 
to a perfectly ordinary kind of cooking challenge. But there's always a surprise, a curveball throwing at us. You'll be doing it blindfolded. It, they can't be serious. This is ridiculous. Let's get this blind tasting underway. Michael, you're first. Step up. You gentlemen have to turn round now. When the cloche is revealed and I start trying to smell and I, I can smell something savoury. some pork. There's some bacon around it or some kind of cured meat. Prosciutto, I think. Oh. Bite into a carrot and I know it's a carrot. This is weird. Michael, that's two minutes up. <laughs> You've now got one minute to write those down. You ready? Yep. Go. I think I've got a, a fair share of everything. I'm just hoping I can translate that onto the paper and get some stuff right. No time to waste, Michael. No time to waste. Ten seconds, Michael. Just put it down. Three, two, one. That's it, Michael. Round now. Wow. Okay. One down, three to go. OK, Peter, up you come. On blindfold, please. I, I can hear Gary plating up. And it's interesting, when you have your sight taken away, how acute your other senses become. It has a loaf shape, and uh, it's quite sticky. I identify chicken, and I think there's probably pork. Three, two, one. There you go. I was in the top 50 taste and cook, and I know that there's no wrong answers. I've got to get a protein. And so the first few things I write down is like beef, veal, chicken, <laughs> pork, every kind of animal that I can think of, because one of them's got to be right. Three, two, one. What a guesswork. Billy, it's your turn next. There's your dish. You have two minutes to identify as many ingredients as you can. When I start touching the dish, I know instantly it's a terrain. And then all I have to do is start breaking the parts and try to figure out as many ingredients inside as possible. There's so many textures, like firm, soft, crunchy. But you've got 30 seconds left. I got a few ingredients in my head. Time's up, hands off the plate. Tasting and knowing the ingredients is one thing, and also remembering and then start writing down within a minute is totally another challenge. Billy, time's up. Kumar, now it's your turn. I think because I'm a designer, I'm a very visual person. I can't imagine tasting something blindfolded. I just can't. I'm thrown by that completely. Kumar, literally, your fate is in your own hands. Two minutes starts now. I touch the food on the plate, and immediately I sense it is cold. I think it's going to be a dessert of sorts because it's a cold plate. I feel something really soft and squidgy, and I taste it, and it turns out to be apple. So I'm Again, I think it's something to do with a dessert. Kumar, that's a minute already. You need to put a hustle on if you're going to taste everything and identify everything you need. I start tasting it, and it tastes savoury. And it throws me completely. I can't bring something cold and savoury together. I guess being blindfolded has frozen part of my brain. Everything comes to a standstill. My mind goes blank. You have one minute to write down as many ingredients as you can remember. When the blindfold's taken off, there are things that I can remember. But something's happened to my brain. I just can't put names to ingredients. I'm really unhappy. I know I've bombed. Sorry, my mind's gone blank. Kumar, your time's up. It should have been easy. I'd. Honestly, don't know what went wrong. 
you've just completed our first ever blindfolded taste test. We've tallied up your scores, but before we reveal the results, let's find out what the dish is and, of course, the ingredients that make it up. The dish that you were tasting was a terrine. And it was served with an apple relish. I could kick myself. I am very familiar with the terrine. I've made terrines. Under these 24 cloches are the ingredients that went towards making that terrine. Some of you did very well, others didn't. <laughs> so let's find out what the first of these ingredients are. This is something that you all guessed correctly. Apple. You also all got thyme. Three of you got this ingredient right. Prosciutto. I was holding the piece of prosciutto. I was feeling it. I tasted it. Just could not identify it. Shallots, parsley. I wrote parsley down, but that was a guess. Pork. I was really pleased that I managed to get that right, a protein. Two of you got this one, and it is chicken. Oh. Wish I had chicken. Garlic. It's French food. It's got to have garlic in it. Carrots. Yep, I got the carrots. Fantastic. Now, the next ingredient, only one person identified correctly. Vinegar. A lucky guess on the vinegar. Um, I was just hoping it was in that chutney. Broad beans. Pistachios. As soon as I bit into that pistachio, I knew. Again, another great ingredient to have for my dish. Only one person got this ingredient. Cabbage. Ham, or more correctly, ham hock. So far, it looks good. I think I have about six ingredients that I can cook with. Our 15th ingredient, only one person got. Stock. I got stock. It's a good basic. It gets an extra dimension to any dish. Of these last nine, not one of you got any of them. Chicken livers, baby leeks, duck fat, brandy, cardamom. Oh, no one's going to get that. Celery. I saw Kumar biting into one of these. It was a butter bean. I knew it. I, could. I bit it. I was chewing it. I couldn't put a name to it. I'm so upset with myself. Billy. You wrote down a number of herbs as your time was running out. The one you didn't write down is tarragon. <laughs> the final ingredient binding it all together, gelatin. These are the 24 ingredients that went into this dish. The person who scored the highest number, getting an impressive 11 ingredients correct, is Michael. Having the most ingredients could probably be a blessing as well as a curse. I guess it's probably expected me to cook a super dish because I've got a lot more ingredients than everyone else, but there's maybe too much choice. Lamprodotto. <laughs> the dish that you'll be tasting today is... Ribolita. <laughs> yummy, yummy. I can eat the whole pot. It's so good. <laughs> there are many variations of ribolita here in Italy. The one you tasted this morning was simple and delicious. Don't be fooled. This one here has lots of ingredients that are quite complex. Let the battle of the taste buds begin. <laughs> Mindy, you've already got an immunity pin, so we'll let Alice go first. <laughs> I taste a lot of leafy greens and a lot of veggies in this ribolita, so things that you would expect to find in a really hearty soup. Alice, name your first ingredient. Potato. There is potato in the Ribolita. 
It's really yummy. All right, Mindy, your turn. Ribellini to me actually tastes like a can of vegetable soup. That's the best way I can describe it to anyone back home. Just like a good vegetable soup. Mindy, what's it going to be? Carrots. Carrots. There are carrots in the Rivolita. Pepper. Pepper. Mindy, what is it? Cauliflower. Thank goodness there's cauliflower. Broccoli. Broccoli. Cabbage. Cabbage. I think we need to know what type of cabbage. Um, Cavolo Nero. It's a very specific type of cabbage. Oh, it's black cabbage. So Tuscan black cabbage. Yep. <laughs> there is Tuscan black cabbage in the Rivolita. Taking a chance there, Mindy. Taking a chance. 22 ingredients left. Alice, you're next. I'm going to go with garlic. Garlic? Without tasting? Yep. OK. Brave. I'd put garlic in a ribolita. Many wouldn't. Bang. But there it is. Mindy? Cabbage. More information. More information. Well, what's Savoy cabbage? Mindy, Savoy cabbage is correct. <laughs> Alice? What's it going to be, Alice? Onion. 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 <laughs> right, Mindy. I go up to the, the soup bowl to actually eat the soup. I can see cannellini beans and I can see bolotti beans and I know there's bread in there because it's a bread soup. And then I see barley and it kind of just seems easy. It's right in front of me. Barley. 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 Very easily confused with a couple of other grains. <laughs> Luckily for Alice, oh. you're wrong. There's no barley in the Rivolita. at least 10 or more other ingredients that I knew were in there. I'd seen zucchini, I'd seen three types of beans. I knew that bread was in there. So I cannot believe I just stuffed that up. OK, what are they going to do to us now? Right, today's elimination, it's going to happen over two rounds. Round one is a taste test. Taste test? Oh, it's the first taste test ever. I know I can cook, but with palate, it's a completely different ball game. And here comes the oh. dish now. 
There's a few of us that aren't feeling particularly confident. Oh, look, I'm nervous as hell, but I know that I need to just deal with it and trust myself. So, in front of you is a delicious dish. That dish is the same for every single one of you. It's come out of this pot here. We're going to give you three minutes to taste and identify as many ingredients possible. Then we're going to give you two minutes to write down all of those ingredients that you remember. Let's be quite frank, this is one of the most important tastings you'll possibly ever have to do in this kitchen. Why? It's elimination. But more importantly, in round two, the ingredients that you correctly name are the only ingredients that you can cook with. Geez, you hope you want to get more than one right. I think this probably suits me. You know, I'm a winemaker, I think I've got a pretty good palate, but you know, if I only pick a couple of ingredients, it's going to make it really hard to make a top level dish. And I need to do that, I need to stay. I feel like I've got a good palate, and like, it'll be easy. There'll be at least half a dozen you'll be able to see straight off the bat, regardless of what it is. There are 23 ingredients in this classic dish that we've set before you. If you identify all 23 correctly, you'll be safe. You'll probably get a reputation of being some sort of tasting freak. But that's going to be a um, particularly difficult task today. Because this is a blind oh. taste test. It suddenly becomes a lot harder. I suddenly realise that this is going to be quite the challenge. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, George, what's the matter? Oh, I just feel so sick. I definitely think Georgia feels that she let the team down, you know, being captain yesterday, and I think she feels a lot of responsibility losing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm worried for Georgia. I think her mind's a bit all over the place, so, yeah, it's not going really well for her right now. Use your knowledge. Use what you've seen. Take a few punts. Yeah. And nothing to lose. Keep writing yeah. it down, because what you get right, yeah. you get to cook with. Uh... Blindfolds on, please. Oh. Feels like I'm going executed. <laughs> Blindfolds are on and my stomach is in my throat. At least the food doesn't have a long way to go. There's 23 ingredients in this dish and I need to identify at least eight to be able to create something relatively decent in the next round. You have three minutes to taste and feel and identify as many ingredients as you can and then two minutes to write them down. We're going to lift those cloches now. Off you go. I'm nervous. Um, I just get my hands right into it. I need to start tasting things. I need to get things into my mouth as quickly as possible. She's feeling it, just deciding what it is and then putting it in her mouth. Oh, she'll find the herbs that way, which is great. I don't like hot chilies because I can't handle the heat. That's the first thing that I get after the first mouthful. I get jalapeno. <laughs> tasted a prawn, tasted chicken. There's okra in there. It's soupy. This is gumbo. Sean was basically in his food. He had his face almost in it. It was kind of gross to watch, it was, but I found it, for some reason, really funny. <laughs> it tastes great. I'm feeling quite confident at this stage. You know, I've found there's definitely prawn, there's definitely tomato, and there's definitely parsley. I could make a dish with that. You have one minute to go. Oh, my God, what is this? I have no idea what the dish is, and... I'm really worried that I'm not going to get enough ingredients that I could work with. 
It's just hand, mouth, hand, mouth, hand, mouth in this situation. Difficult is, yeah, taste and identify, but then you've got to register all those things, not forget them because they've got to write them down later. A little bit of a mind blank and I'm feeling pretty frantic. I've got to get my nerves under control. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it, sit up, hands down. Time's up. I just need to start writing. I know I get really distracted really easily. I just need to get the things down as quickly as possible. Otherwise, I'm going to forget. You have two minutes to write down as many ingredients as you can. Blindfolds off, start writing. I honestly felt like I was in an exam at school. I knew the answers. I was just so bad at concentrating on putting them down. I'm pretty sure that it was gumbo, but I'd never made gumbo before in my life. You have 10 seconds left. I'm feeling really stressed and my mind just blanks. I can't even think of anything to guess. So I'm definitely scared that I'm not going to have any ingredients to work with today. Three, two, one. Hands down, close your books. Well, we've tallied up your answers, but before we reveal who's done best, who maybe hasn't done quite as well, who reckons they know what this dish is? Colin? I think it's gumbo. Absolutely. Louisiana gumbo, <laughs> the classic of the American South. I actually haven't eaten gumbo before. I'm really nervous about getting, getting these ingredients right. First one, everybody got chili, jalapeno. The next ingredient, everybody got right too, which was salt. Next one, prawns. Prawns, tick. I didn't put that down. <laughs> so, Georgia, what happened there? I just, maybe I missed it in the bowl or maybe I ate it and just didn't taste it, but yeah. Next one. Onions. Thyme. Tomatoes. Celery. Chicken. I got chicken. Huge relief for me. I should be okay. This next ingredient, six of you got it correct. Chicken stock. Garlic, parsley, bay leaf. Mm. Next one, a gumbo staple, okra. I can live without okra. Anyway, it sounds like orca, the whale. That's... Next ingredient, oysters. Oh, yeah, oysters, yeah. Kransky, sausage, flour. Good staple to have on your bench, eh? Spring onions. Next ingredient is oil. Sean, Tash, you're the only two people that have oil to cook with. It's really going to be a challenge cooking without oil today. I need to come up with another way to get oil into my dish. Bacon. Only one person got this. Butter. Who got this right? Oh, yeah. Colin. That's a huge advantage for me. I'm going to make that butter work every step of the way. These last three ingredients no one got correct. Capsicum. Filet powder. So I've got a tea like flavour. And the final ingredient Tabasco. I am kicking myself that I didn't get chicken, bacon. I, I know I'm at the bottom end. Remember, every ingredient you guess correctly, you'll be able to cook with in the second round. So, Amy, you got 15 correct. <laughs> I feel good. God, I've impressed myself. 